Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to break into everything you ever wanted to know about oil washes and using oil paints for staining and all that fun stuff. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get into the technique and learn it Vinci V style. So a long time ago, like 350 videos ago or something, which is crazy, I made a video about oil washes and I was painting a big night. Well, hey, time goes by, but I guess things don't change after all. Uh, today, we're going to talk all about oil washes, and we're going to use another really big night to do it. But I really want to expand on what I talked about in the original video and show you some of the techniques and how you can use these oil paints and washes in maybe a different way than you're thinking. So I'm going to give you all the tips, tricks, and techniques you need to put this awesome wash to use on your miniatures, whether they be big robots or whether they be tiny little men. Whatever, you'll be ready. Let's head over to the desk and let's see what we can do. All right, we're gonna start with the most basic application, the literal oil wash. So the first thing you wanna do is not mix something that's just black. So here I'm gonna mix my oil wash and this is normally where most people go wrong. Now the challenge with oil washes as compared to their in a bottle acrylic counterparts is that of course, they don't come pre-mixed, you have to make them. And one of the things I always see people do is use just black. Don't do that. Mix other colors in. Here, I'm using this nice dark brown color, but I could just as easily use um, something that's a, a sepia tone or a purple tone or anything like that. All of those are gonna add interesting chromatic variation. Mix them in, it'll still be very dark. The second thing I usually see people do wrong is make them too thin. Uh, you really do want to err on the side of a thicker wash. What's the right ratio? It's hard to say. And each oil paint, and whether it's student grade or artist grade or so on, can have a different thickness to it. But what I'll say is you can test. You test it on the back of your hand or something like that. But you do want to make it relatively thick. And honestly, err on the side of thicker. Because this is an oil wash, you will be able to clean it up later. So in this case, I was using four little um, pipe, pipe, pipettes full of white spirits, my Gamsol white spirits here, um, to do this. But, you know, you can use whatever amount gets you to roughly the same place, along with the, the two squeezes I have. The next thing is you want to mix. Mix, mix, mix. Tip number three is mix, 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 mix. Be Sir Mix-a-Lot, okay? Because you've got to make sure it's really mixed up. Get all those chunks, all those parts broken down in the white spirits. Get that nice heavy wash. Now, the most common question people usually ask is, do I need to varnish this? And my answer is always, no, you don't. But you can if you want. If you do something like a gloss or highly satin or uh, varnish right before you apply the oil wash, it can help it flow into the recesses more easily. When you're working over a shiny metallic paint like this, honestly, it's already a very glossy surface. The need to gloss varnish it is zero. Um, white spirits does not interact with acrylic paint. It is not corrosive. It is not anything that eats or choose away acrylic paint. If you put on an oil wash and wipe away paint, that isn't because the white spirits is somehow destroying the paint. It's because you're brushing too hard with your brush or whatever you're applying it with on a very wet area. Liquid will soften acrylic paint. That is simply true. So you want to use a big brush and, and apply it softly. You're not trying to attack the thing. It doesn't owe you any money. Just be gentle and get the wash on there. Now, when it's actually time to apply the wash, once we have it all mixed, we are literally just going to slop it on. Uh, this is so much fun, I have to say. It is great to just slop this oil wash on, and really do. Don't, don't get rough with your brush. You be nice and gentle, but you keep going back into the wash and you keep applying it and just slopping it all over. And make sure you take your time to get that slop everywhere. Uh, you don't want any spaces that haven't been covered or anything like that. So you want a nice, even application over the whole miniature of the oil wash. I mean, it'll, it'll, it will flow very naturally into all the recesses and everything like that. So it's just a matter of getting it to, it to flow into all those spaces by applying it evenly across the whole surface. Okay, now you got to let it sit for a little while. 
So with my washes, what I did is I went and did something else. Like I worked on another project. I let this sit there for about an hour and a half. And then I came back. Now it'll look touch dry, but oil paints don't dry. They cure. There's a difference. It's a, it's a, it's a reaction with light, not with air. <clears throat> the white spirits will evaporate. That is true. But the oil paint itself has to cure. So you'll notice if I run my finger over the surface, I will wipe away paint. And so in fact, all the cleaning up you see me do here is just with a completely dry sponge, wiping very softly. And the reason I'm letting it dry completely before I do this is so it's not wet and I don't wipe away any paint. If you wipe too quickly when the paint has still been softened by having a bunch of liquid on it, liquid of any type, you can wipe away paint. So. Uh, we just take these makeup sponges. These are literally these little triangular makeup sponges. Uh, the link is down in the description uh, to if you want to pick some up. But they're great. They're cheap. They're used. They're soft. They, they do a great job of cleaning up oil washes. And you'll notice I can pull all of that staining that happened over the miniature off of it. No problem. No drama. Llama whatsoever. So we just go around the figure and wipe it all and leave the darker color in the recesses. Now, a couple of quick tips here. Number one. You can, if you want it to look more streaky or something like that, you can leave some of it in place, especially in places where there might be streaky stuff left. Number two, wipe down, like wipe with intentionality. So if you want to leave some of that, it will leave just very uh, small amounts of that, that there still, and give that impression of that stuff coming down and, and, and more of a sort of natural, very subtle, actual streaking into the metals. It can be very powerful for a very minor, minor, subtle effect. Okay, uh, and then if number tip number three here with this is if you have anything that's too small, you can always go to like smaller Q-tips or pieces of cloth. Don't actually use Q-tips like cotton buds; that will just wick off the little pieces. You buy the little makeup eye buds. You'll see me use some of them later on. Okay, that's all just the basic wash. Nice, simple, easy. But from here, we're going to talk about some other ways we can use this stuff. Similarish techniques but we're going to accomplish some different effects. All right, next up, we're going to do some more uh, detailed streaking and shading, basically. So here, instead, what I do is I take just simply my dark brown color and I start dabbing it around the miniature. And I want to put it like over rivets and down in recesses and in other places where I think that this sort of dark, grimy, deep brown stain would be found. This is probably like gathered dirt and detritus and rust and dust and stuff like that. So I'm going to put it in all those recesses where I think it might be or on rivets or places where it might naturally run down. For example, the top of large flat surface where we'll get streaks later. And then what I'm going to do is come back in with a couple different size brushes and start pulling it down, streaking it down. Now, when I use those secondary brushes, they have white spirits in them um, so that I can thin it out. I will then go to a clean, dry brush and pull that down uh, with it and use that to sort of wipe away and, and remove and void some of that paint off. Once this, when you put it on wet, it's going to look very strong. When it dries, it will be pretty darn weak and subtle, especially with these darker colors. So the key here is to be sort of like stronger than you think you need to be, I guess is what I'll say. You can also just use the white brush and kind of, or the, the dry brush, I'm sorry, and just kind of feather it down uh, to, to like make sure that it remains, it, that it gets really streaky. You'll sometimes see here, see me use a big fat brush. And what I'll do is I'll just sort of dab and streak at it and pull at it. And I'm just trying to create those natural running little micro streaks that are happening to kind of break up the large individual streak. You don't want just one big long streak that just like is there. That's not how actual streaking on stuff works. <clears throat> but we just go in, soften all of those basically little triangles we've made up <clears throat> with a wet brush. And then we take the dry brush and we clean up around that. I work back and forth here for a while. You can keep messing with it. If you wipe away too much, you just put more on uh, and so on and so forth. Because you can, you can void any of this out anytime you want. You can just literally remove it from the model by dipping your brush in pure white spirits and just, it, it's like an eraser, but, but a really good eraser, not like one of those bad crappy erasers we got in elementary school. Uh, so you can just make these streaks very simply, easily. Again, let these cure, let these dry, and then we're gonna get to our 
next step, which is adding some actual tones and staining and real rust streaking. And that's going to be exciting. Okay, so now I'm going to move up to this much lighter brown color. As you can see, this is much more rust toned. Now, with this particular color, what we're going to do is we're going to stain the metal. So sometimes when you're doing oil washes, the other thing you want to do is actually leave stains like metal and inorganic things like this uh, will often just have staining on them. This could also be a great way to do things like mud staining or similar. Now we're going to do a, a video in the future, deep diving into sort of weathering and stuff like that. But this is not about really like active rust or where the metal's rotting away. This is more about something sitting on the surface that could easily lead to rust later. So now we're going to take this and we're, again, we're going to dab it on things like rivets on the tops of open flats where there would be natural streaks occurring. But also importantly, we're going to hide some of it in areas where there might be oil or grease or dirt or detritus naturally collecting, uh, such as the little like pistons or things like that that would sort of naturally have grease and dirt build up on them because they'd be sticky as the piston moves in and out and pushes some of the oil back up onto it. Those kinds of things down near the feet, all those areas. So when I place that color everywhere, I'm just putting a glob of the paint on. And this is the fun part about oil paints. You can just put these globs on and know that you can mess around with them and shape them and move them and color them and stuff later. So you really have the freedom to work however you'll need to. My next step is going to be to basically take then a brush just full of white spirits and start again pulling it down. You'll see me do some of the same streaking techniques here that I did in with the darker color. And that's first off uh, exactly what I'm, I'm replicating the same technique because it's the same thing. This is meant to be a fresher streak than the old one that's really dried and absorbed into the paint. So you can layer these streaks with different colors to achieve uh, differing effects on the uh, the discoloration of the metal and the dirt detritus that's been left behind by water running. The other thing we can do with it is we can uh, just basically take some white spirits and slap it onto that glob and let it run all over the place naturally. When we flood the area with the white spirits, it's going to get very thin and run into all the recesses. Now, initially it will look a bit strange and a bit strong, but let it cure. Um, once it does, and again, like once that is to say the white spirits have evaporated, remember, you can always go in and clean this up with a sponge if you don't, if it's too strong or you don't like how it looks, but it will soften after the white spirits evaporate and all the glossiness leaves. But what I'm doing here is really just pushing that around. So again, I'm getting it into things like joints and in all these places where dirt and these kinds of mud stains or dirt stains would naturally gather. And then I just flood the area to make sure it runs and it becomes thin. The advantage here of what it does is it creates a completely different sort of tone in that area of the metal. It stains the metal, but it does so very organically, very credibly, very naturally, because that darker tone is going to flood into the recesses where that dirt, dust, and so on would naturally gather. So it's going to feel very natural to that space. So the combination of taking this lighter brown and creating both the streaks as well as creating uh, these sorts of areas, these patches of discoloration, help create a much more credible, realistic, weathered uh, machine, right? This is great for things like these robots I'm working on, but it can also work on things like tanks or big armored fellows. If you happen to have any of those, I mean, what game would have, you know, completely armored figures as its central characters. Completely insane to think about. But this technique can work really great for showing like the dirt, the detritus, the, the sort of wear of weather on uh, an inorganic uh, miniature, you know, being in the world over time. So there you go. That's three easy ways to use the oil technique, to use oil washes to your advantage to add more credibility and realism to your miniatures. Now, what I love about this is that, again, with the oil paints, you can experiment around with it. You can drop on these globs and then thin them out, test it, see how you like the color, see how you like the streaks, see how you like the stains, and if you don't, wipe them right away. A little brush or a little sponge and a little bit of white spirits, and you can erase it like it was never there to begin with. So, paint bravely. Paint without fear. Oil uh, paints and oil washes give you a chance 
to really utilize your paints in a way you never get to with acrylic because because no decision you make is permanent. You can always go back, you can always erase it, you can always change it. And it's incredibly liberating. If you liked this, give it a like. If you've got any questions about oil washes or using these kinds of techniques I didn't cover, drop those down in the comments below. I always answer every question and comment that I see. Uh, as always, if you want to support the channel, uh, there's lots of ways you can do so. You can subscribe, you can like, you can share it. All those fun things are free. There's also links down below to all the tools you saw me using in this video. So the white spirits, um, the oil paints, uh, the sponges, all of that, you'll find those links down below. Um, those are through Amazon. You can pick your stuff up there. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it gives the channel a nice little kickback, and I deeply appreciate it. Of course, if you want to go all the way, hey, there's our Patreon focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. We'd love to have you as part of the community. As always, though, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.